Father, we magnify you, we glorify you, we exalt you in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. While we were singing, it's going to be wild. I know some people you know, in some places would come in and think that, man, you guys are wild. No, this is calm. <laughs> Compared to the Holy Ghost. Why? You know, the when the Spirit gets to move. And uh, we love that when, when he does. And how he chooses to move. But, but uh, we understand that uh, we're coming into a time that we're going to see the full manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see the full manifestation of the Apostle's office, the Prophet's office, the Evangelist's office, the Teacher's office, and the Pastor's office. You know, we're going to see the, the fullness of that. We're going to see the gifts of the Spirit at 100%. Hallelujah. You say, what's that going to look like? It's going to look like it's wild. Hallelujah. It's going to look like heaven has just, just dripped dip down in, into us and stay for a season. Hallelujah. And so we just, you know, we just need to get our hearts prepared for it. Be willing to go with the flow of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sita taro bushi con da nana masu con da rede mette chi se che toro no masu con da nana vanti dai vede de bushi con da nana masu taro taro da butta ete ete bushi con mongo da nana masu dara banda para mongo de ne di da butta da zita rara bushi te vari te la te va. For I have told you time and time again that my spirit is going to fall in this place. My spirit is falling around the world and it'll fall in this place. And as it has been said of old, you ain't seen nothing yet as to what my spirit will do uh, with you in this place and in this city using, using you. And so you will begin to see even greater manifestations of my spirit, saith the Lord. There'll be some that will not be able to handle it. And there'll be those that'll just fall away and drop away. But then there'll be those that are hungry. There'll be those that are thirsty for more of me, saith the Lord. And they shall come in and they shall, they shall feast in this place. They shall feast on my word. They will feast upon my spirit. For my, my plan is to bless. In the world, the world is getting darker and darker and evil men are waxing worse and worse. But where sin abounds, my word says, my grace abounds so much more. And my grace will abound in these last days, saith the Lord. My grace in salvation, my grace in healing, my grace in deliverance, my grace in my manifested presence will grow stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. And the, day the devil will, will rail against us. The heathens will rage. But what difference does that make, saith the Lord? For the King of Glory is in residence here. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus. Lord, we magnify you. We thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Lord, we worship you today. You are good. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. And so we magnify you today. Holy Spirit, we stand in awe of you. We reverence you. We reverence the time that we have with you. We just submit ourselves as a congregation to you. This is your church, this is your service. We change all our plans to fit into your plans. We, we just we can drop everything just to just to get in line with you 
Lord, there's nothing that we have to do except obey you and follow your lead. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for just guiding us as a congregation. Thank you for making yourself real to every person that's here. Father, there will not be one person that leaves here today that they will know they've been in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. You know every heart. You know every everything that's going on in every life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We have the, this new couple that's sitting back there. I said, I was talking to you about how nice your cane looks. It's fancier than mine. Could you stand up, please? It just saves me a trip back there. Uh, I noticed that you guys seem to love praising and worshiping the Lord. Amen. I, there's just a, a, a scripture that keeps been going around in, in, in my spirit concerning you. It may mean nothing. It may mean something. It's found in Jeremiah 3.14. And it says, multitudes, multitudes, in the valley of decisions. And the other translation says, decisions, decisions, in the valley of decisions. Seems like you're going to have to make some decisions that are going to have to come. But it says, I'm there in the valley of decisions. And if you'll look to him, let him make the decisions for you. Whatever it is that you have to do, whatever decisions you have to make, let the Holy Spirit. The Bible says over in the book of James, that the wisdom that cometh down from above is, first of all, peaceful, gentle, easy to be entreated. And so there's peace. You follow peace in your heart. Your head might be just going crazy, but you follow your heart. Amen. Does that mean anything to you today? All right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. We used to have a, many years ago, Dr. Evan would bring a young man by the name of Muhammad to church. And Muhammad was a, was a Muslim, <coughs> but he would come to church on Sunday morning, and he would just sit there. He came for, I don't know, a year, year and a half, something like that. One day I asked him, I said, uh, Muhammad, I said, you're, you're, you're a Muslim. He says, but I, you, know, you keep coming to church. How is it, you, you know, what is it that keeps you bringing you back to church all the time? And he said, it's the magic. I said, the magic? The magic? I said, I don't understand. He says, what's the magic that you do? Oh, 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 the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In time, brother, uh, Dr. Evan led him to the Lord, got him saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and then he went back to the United Arab Emirates and someplace back there, and he, he started ministering and starting churches over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it all got, got started in here. Because we're just a little bit wild. Hallelujah. Don't you love the gifts of the Spirit when they're in manifestation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory in my name and the end of Well, let's just pray in the spirit a little bit. We're, we're holding those people with that's just that heavenly language. Faith. Faith. You preach faith and you teach faith in this place. And there are those that they hear faith. But they take a step back. They're not operating in, in the fullness of faith. They they consent to it mentally, mental assent. But you're gonna have to do more, saith the Lord. You're going to have to believe. You are going to have to believe. If you want things from the Spirit of God and you are playing things from the Spirit of God, you will have to believe. You can't just mentally assent and say that, yes, I'm believing. But you can't just state your claim. Stand in faith. Standing upon my promises. For all of my promises are yes and amen, and all of my promises 
have been sealed by the blood of my son Jesus. For I cannot lie, saith the Lord. My word is true. If you will stand upon my word and believe it, it will work for you. But be sure, examine yourself. Examine yourself to see whether you are in faith. Listen to your words. Are you speaking faith-filled words all the time? Or are you speaking faith-filled words around people and then in private you're thinking and saying something else? For what you say in front of others, you need to say all by yourself. For Satan listens to see and hear your conversation. And he'll know whether you're in faith or not. So stand in faith, saith the Lord. Take your stand. For I cannot lie. My word is true. And if you'll stand, you'll see those things that you have need of coming into manifestation. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. In the most you go down the room, you don't she talk about the most about the Rita Boom, the Tasaka, the Ranta. Lord, it about the Ete, Lord, we was Shima Shitara. We magnify you today. We magnify you today. Lord, is a very better. Zomba Runda Mundi Vende Kesa Kata Ranta Bundi Kita Bataka. Zomba Runda Bundi Kita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ita Ranta Bundi Rete. Zitta Runda Bundi Kita Ranta. Zomba Runda Bundi Kita Ranta. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For there is a flow of prosperity that will flow through this place. Be sure that you step into it. Step into that flow. For remember, I am the author of the flow. It's not the money that you need, it's me that you need. But I bring prosperity wherever I go, saith the Lord. And prosperity will come in different ways. Some of it will come in job offers, job opportunities, inheritances. Things will come and suddenly the, the things that you had no expectancy of. But there'll come a flow of prosperity and blessings in this place. But you'll have to say something about it. You'll have to say, that's mine, that belongs to me. I'm in, I'm all in, I'm all in. And it'll come in, it's coming into, into my, my life, coming into my hands. But remember, I'm the source. I am the source, saith the Lord. Keep your eyes upon me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we magnify you. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. the prosperity flow that we're in right now and I'm not trying to get out of that but, but we kept saying the word wild mm -hmm. when we were singing and and then in one of pastors when pastor was talking here is he used that word wild and I just felt compelled to look it up and um, most of the definitions of wild do not seem to really fit what we believe that we should be you know untamed and uh, uncultivated and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's not really that's not really what we want. But very enthusiastic or excited is one yeah. of the definitions of wild. Amen. Amen. God wants us to be very 
enthusiastic yes. and very excited. Amen. And we have reason to be, right? Yes. I mean, some Christians are the most miserable people you've ever seen on the face of the earth. But we're not supposed to be, are we? No. We're supposed to be excited. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to be, you know, eagles get excited when a storm comes. Yeah. You know, um, we're, we're, we're watching the world crumble before us. But we can either get depressed and we can get uh, in, in utter despair or we can get excited and say, God's doing something. This is the end times and we were born for this time. We were created for such a time as this and God gave us all the tools and all the inner strength that we need mm -hmm. to survive, not only just to survive, but to thrive and to yeah. and to uh, to walk the, the faith walk, as Pastor yeah. was talking about, walk by faith. But another definition of wild, and I used to play cards a lot when I was younger, not so much these days, but, but what's a wild card mean? Huh. A wild card is a card that can be anything that the person holding it wants it to be. Yeah. Amen? A wild card is not is not limited. You know, if, if you have a, a, a number two card, that's limited to a two of hearts, right? It's limited. But when you slap down a wild card, it can be anything that the person holding it wants it to be. And so when it says it's going to be wild, that means God's going to have a bunch of wild cards that can be whatever he needs them to be at that time. Amen. Brother Tony, you are a wild card. Amen. Yeah. You're a wild card in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. You can be anything that he wants you to be. And you're going to do things that you've never done before. You're going to do things that are out of the box. Because you're an out of the box minister. Amen. And you're going to do things that are out of the box. Because you are a wild card in the hand of the Lord. Amen. And so are you, Kemp. And so are you, Albert. And so are you, Nellie. And Randy and Kathy, you all are wild cards. Lord. Carolyn, you're a wild card. Lord. Amen. You're not boxed. Jan, you are a wild card. And even that 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 proper man you've got next to you who's sitting there all <laughs> proper, he's a wild card Lord. too. Amen. Lord. You can be whatever God needs you to be in that moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that was a good one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's going to be wild. But it's, it's going to be God wild. Yeah. It's going to be Holy Ghost wild. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, I had a wonderful message for this morning, which we'll save for next week, maybe. It is uh, Communion Sunday. We'll do that in a few minutes. But what, what we're going to do right now is, uh, uh, Sam, we're going to turn the camera off. How many realize that you can uh, actually take communion at home? Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that? I had a lady say to me, she said, uh, I said, well, you can take communion at home. She says, you, you mean you're, you'll come to my home and serve me communion? I said, no. I said, you can have communion all by yourself. She said, I didn't know that. I thought I had to have a minister or a priest that uh, administer that to me. No, the Bible, Jesus said, as often as you do this, just remember me. So we can, you know what, there's been times I've taken communion every single day for, for two or three months. Just felt like in my heart, the Lord wanted me to do that. And you can do that. Because uh, communion is, is called Holy Communion because there's, there's power in communion. Mm -hmm. There's power because when you realize that what it is that we hold in our hands, what we hold in our hands is actually our covenant that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ and with heaven. You and I, it's called the New Covenant. We are born again. And we were, when we got born again, we, were, we became part of that New Covenant because we had faith in the blood of Jesus that was shed for us. We realize that his body has been broken for us. And so there's still healing today. I thank, thank God he is a healer today. Lord. He still does signs, wonders, and miracles. We still cast out devils. I, Brother Tony, he called me the other day, and he says, I've been going to church, I think he said, 38 years, was it? 38 years, he says, and, all the, and I've been in the multitudes of churches. He says, the other night was the very first time I ever heard anybody ever teach on casting out devils. Well, come around. We, we, we talk about it. On a, Amen. You know, not every service, but we do talk about it. Why? Because people, first of all, you need to know how to cast them out for yourself. Yep. Yep. Whether you know it or not, there's demons all around you and people. Mm -hmm. And you might need to know how to say, come out in Jesus' name. That's right. Okay? That's, that, that's, that's what you need to know. You have to have faith in the name of Jesus, and you just tell them, shut up and come out. 
So now you've graduated, all right? Now you are now you are an ex, ex, expert demon caster out there. Okay? That's all you need to know. Just tell them, shut up and come out in Jesus' name. So we're part of the covenant that God that, that Jesus established. When he died on the cross, he said it is finished. It is finished. But what he had finished was also the start when, when he came up out of the grave, out of the tomb. So that's when the New Testament started. The New Testament didn't start with Jesus' birth. The New Testament started when Jesus came out of the tomb and out of the grave. And so we are in covenant. I have an agreement with God. And something the Lord said to me this morning, and, and I wrote it down, was he said, and I, I think I said it earlier, every promise of mine has been sealed by my blood. Every promise that that, the, that God has ever made is sealed in the blood. And God says, uh, in uh, Titus 1, uh, uh, verse 2, it says, God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. Verse 6, it says, God cannot lie. Mm -hmm. And so when we realize that, that he backs up his word, he stands behind his word, all we have to do is have faith. If we have no faith, uh, we, we don't accomplish much. But if we have faith that God says, I, I stand behind my word, I stand behind my word. He says he confirms his word with signs following. Amen. Amen. So in First Corinthians chapter 11, we have uh, Paul writing in verse 23. He said, For I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered unto you. So the first thing he did, he says he received the, the instruction. He received the word. He received the revelation. You see, you can go to church and you can take communion, you know, 365 days a year if you want to. And if you have no revelation of what it's supposed to do, it's not going to help you. Okay? We have to have revelation. We have to have insight into the power that is here. Jesus said over in the Gospel of John, my, my flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. And it offended them. It offended many of his disciples, and he said, does this offend you? And, and many of them walked away. But of the 12 that were there, he said, well, where are we going to go? You, you alone, we don't understand what you're talking about, and it just sounds offensive, but you alone have the, the words of life. You alone. And so he wasn't talking about being a cannibal. He was talking about becoming part of a covenant. And even in the Old Testament, that when a covenant was made, and many covenants were made, when covenants were made, there were several things that happened. One, uh, they would break bread or have a meal. Two, blood had to be shed. And three, the, the third part is, which, which uh, uh, Ian, I think, touched on a little bit, was that whatever the person that is making the, you know, that offers the covenant, Everything he has is offered to you. It belongs to you. So all of God's weapons now belong to us. Amen. All of God, God gave us weapons. Yes, he did. You go back and you look at the, the covenant between Jonathan and David. Mm -hmm. David was a nobody. Who was, God said, you're a somebody. And, and Jonathan was the son of a king. But they loved each other. And they made a covenant together between a man that had everything, the king's son, and the one who had nothing. It's called a diocese. It's a covenant where one has everything to offer and the other has nothing to offer but his love and faithfulness. And so Jonathan and David made a covenant and Jonathan said, all of my weapons belong to you. Everything I've got, if you need anything that I can get, it's yours because it's just as much yours as it. Everything in my household belongs to you. And so it is with the Lord. Everything God has is yours. Everything God has is yours. But it comes through faith, and it comes through the covenant that God made. So Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which I have delivered unto you, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, and so I like to think that and I, I believe that this, 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 they call it bread. And for whatever reason, we'll call it bread too. He blessed it. He's already blessed it. But he 
did 2,000 years ago is still, still working today. So I would like to have been there when they had communion, you know. Well, we're here, and it's the same, okay? And so it says that he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. His body was broken for us. Why was it broken for us? Because by his stripes we're healed. There's healing today by the stripes of Jesus. There's healing because he paid the price for every sickness, every disease, every mental torment, every single thing that could ever possibly be wrong with our bodies or our minds. He's already healed. He made healing available. And we can touch him today. And so, Heavenly Father, we come and we receive this this piece of bread as the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's blessed it. And we receive it as blessed in Jesus' name. Let's take it together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I receive healing today. I receive healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. You paid the price and it was not in vain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And after the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this, is the, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So he said, remember me. Remember. Remember what I've done. <clears throat> For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show or proclaim the Lord's death till he come. So what did his blood do for us, Albert? What, come on, very, very quickly. Can you just tell us what his blood has done for us very quickly, Brother Albert? Praise God. They got it. Okay. okay. It's done so much, I don't know if I can say it in just a few words. <laughs> Do your best. But it's, I'll just cut you off if you go too long. Amen. <laughs> but it has his ratified... The word of God. You know, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Amen. And he's made us in right standing. Yes. You know, the word justified means just as if I never sinned. Yes. But justification, it was a term that it wasn't a, an, an act or an attribute of God, but it was an act of God whereby God declared us righteous amen. in good standing with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Albert. So we are made righteous. It says in 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness and ungodliness. So we are to walk in the light of the blood of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the light of that knowledge. His blood has washed us. You are clean. You are pure. You are washed. Your sins, which the Bible talked about this woman, uh, uh, Mary that came and, and anointed Jesus' feet and Simon the, the leper he was so skeptical of her he said if he would if, if he knew what kind of woman she was and Jesus said to Simon her sins which are many are gone all of us have sinned and his blood washes us clean just as if we've never sinned there is no record of sin on heaven's books when you come under the blood. Amen? Amen? So, Father, we receive Jesus has blessed us, so we receive the liberty, the freedom yes. that the blood has provided, that we are clean, we are pure, we are washed, find us know by the blood of Jesus. We are in covenant with the Lord. Take it together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, we need... Uh, take up our offering this morning. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to Word of Faith Church. If you need an offering envelope for your giving, surely you have your envelope by now. I made the mistake of saying something when Vince was taking out the offering. And, and so Vince, I know you'll be happy. I grabbed a handful of them. I got them right now. I have no excuse. Oh, excuse. Not to have an offering envelope, but in case you didn't get one, 
they, they, they'll be glad to help you and give you one. Amen. Amen. There's no shame, Randy, no shame today. Maybe a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. No, we're, we're so grateful. You know, God is so good. You know, there's a you know, there was others that said there was a, a, a like a like a stream of, of prosperity flowing, and one of the ways that you get into it is by faith and by sowing. Okay, well you say, think I have very little to give, very little in the hands of God can be turned into very much. Okay, very little in the hands of God when it's done with faith and with love can become very much. And so uh, it says in Third John verse two. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And so God's desire is, is for us to be prosperous. Now, now let's, you know, there's lots of people out there that have different view of prosperity, but the view, the scripture view of prosperity is this, having more than enough for yourself and for every good work. That's prosperity. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, well, let's say something good over our offering, all right? Say this with me, Heavenly Father, what an honor, what a privilege it is to give, to sow, to tithe, to bless this congregation and this world. I'm tithing to you, but I know you don't need the money, but this church does, so it can fulfill the mission that you set before it. So I thank you. You see my time, and you'll bless me back. You'll open up the windows of heaven. You pour me out blessing. There's not room to contain. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, let's go ahead, please. Let's take that up. Nice to have you here, fellow. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Well, that was a little bit different this morning, but different is always good around here. We like different. It's not a cookie cutter service. That's right. When we come to church, we, we have no idea what's going to happen. These things are not planned. We didn't know. We just we just show up. And so we have a Holy Ghost service tonight. We have prayer here Tuesday night. Wednesday night we have another service and it can be just as much Holy Ghost as any other service. We don't limit the Holy Ghost to Sunday morning or Sunday night. And then I believe it's this Friday, 9 a.m. is Kathy's War Room again. And so we encourage you to come on out and, and join Sister Kathy in pray, praying uh, on, on Sunday, uh, Friday morning because uh, they're tearing down strongholds. And you see this, this building over here. We need $5.7 million, and that is, you know, that is nothing to God. And do we have $5.7 million? Yes, we do by faith, and it's in somebody else's hands, and it's going to get to us. Yes. Angels will bring it into us somehow, some way, but we have a vision because God gave us a vision. He told us to, to, uh, uh, to take this and, and build a new building. Uh, for that which is coming. We have to be ready for what is about to happen. Amen. And so uh, there's some things that are going to be happening. We're talking about getting wild. Believe me, it's going to get wild. It'll get wild here, but it's going to get a lot wilder in there. But it's going to be a Holy Ghost wild. Yes. For you see, you know, I would love to see uh, the people at, at Capitol, the Premier and different people, the MLA, coming to our services and getting saved and radically, you know, spirit-filled and everything else. You say, well, that'll never happen. Maybe not in other churches, but it can happen here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I think the, uh, wasn't the queen here a few years ago? Wasn't the queen here a few years ago? Or, or was it, who was it? The, the, somebody was here just a few, you know, five or six years ago. They stayed in the governor's house. Who was that? I don't know who it was, but anyway, a lot of people were going down to see if they could get a glimpse of them, and, and they said, are you going to go down? I said, no, I'll wait right here, and they need to get saved, they'll come down and find me. So. Yeah. Anyway, if you need prayer today, we would love to pray with you, uh, be a good neighbor to somebody, and, and uh, uh, you can love on people a little bit, you can, you know. 
just just be a blessing today. I mean, you have been a blessing. You bless me. I have been blessed today, and, I, and hopefully you've been blessed too. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you need prayer, come on up. We would love to pray with you.